Hi, it's Michelle from Movement Lesson. I have a great course on cognitive vision. It's about functional vision and how to work with your child when they're special needs or when they're not special needs. It's around their developmental milestones and how the vision is incorporated with that and how is it affected by that. There was a great question about binocular occlusion for esotropia. Esotropia, as you know, is when the eye comes in. When you're talking about binasal occlusion, which means they put tape in the center of the eyes. I did this with a post-it note to make it more obvious. The attempt is to draw the, the eyes straight. First of all, this is where you can put yourself into someone else's shoes. So I want you all to get a pair of glasses and to try this. So this is what I'm doing right now. So see, I have this done. Now, even when you look at me, my eyes looked cross, right? So now look at me here. So this is what my eyes look like because our eyes aren't straight. If I were to go straight, so now my eyes are binocular and they have convergence. So right now I'm talking to my phone and no matter where I look, my eyes are going to converge. So there's a difference of me converging here looking at you and converging, let's say, the sprinkler system. So a far conversion. Or if I looked at my, let's say, my, my fingers. So you'll see a different range of conversion. So the eyes are going to go in, but they need to go in symmetrically. So again, if I'm here and watch how both eyes can come in together and they can go out apart. One of the problems with esotropia is the eye wants to stay in. I'm doing with my right eye. But here with my convergence, now here you can see it looks converged, but then going back out, you can see the difference of the two eyes. If I had the one eye in here, I'm not going to be able to see, and somehow my eyes are going to come out. But if you look at me, and again, I have the lights here, so I'm trying to get around it. It still looks like, now I have like a double esotropia. You know, the illusion of, is there. What happens with a lot of kids, first of all, when this happens is then they look at the tape. Now you lose the vision because now I'm here trying to see, because again, why? Kids don't have overcompensation skills. You and I have overcompensation skills. Even if you go to go down the street and there's an accident or flooding or something like that, you know, the brain is always problem solving, but the problem solving is based off a of comparison. Well, the last time I was in this situation, my brain's trying to problem solve, complete the picture. So when I'm doing this again, so here I am, and here I am. You have problems where literally stimming or I start to do this. Now I'm really trying to move because I'm intelligent. I don't want to look at that or I just don't want to wear my glasses. Why should I? If I made you to wear these suckers and you tried to drive a car, you, you wouldn't be having a good time. So now another thing is, now if you watch my eyes here, I'll get close again. I'm going to have visual gaps. So I have my vision coming in here, but if I were to close this left eye completely or patch it, I can't see this hand right? Because my tape is in the middle of it. So now I have visual gaps here. So it's, don't think of just the visual gaps through here, right? Which I'm definitely going to have. It's sort of like, you know, you walk around with the post note on your forehead and you know what I mean? You're going to have visual gaps. I'm going to cover that. But the visual gaps is actually, so my left eye can see this. Now it's a little thrown off because I could also see it in my camera, right? But, but I, my right eye, you know, it's, this is out of sight. So same thing. So I'm going to have visual gaps here as well as here. So when I'm crossing midline, here I am. See, now here I see kind of double floating through, and now my right eye is picking it up. But what you're going to see more of for the untrained eye is this. Guess what? I'm never crossing visual midline. Now, what you're going to see here is again, is I bring in the object and I see it and I bring it across, right? So there's no gaps. But with this here, I'm not seeing it. But, but again, I have two eyes. So you don't realize how much you rely on the left eye to the right eye. But if I went like this, I can't see this. I can't, now I'm picking up right about here. If my eye is more the exotropy or something like this, like I'm not seeing this at all. So based off the eye alignment, you're going to have visual gaps. You're going to also have visual gaps, but you're also going to have midline interruptions. Most people think of midline here, but you have midline here and you also have midline here. So even in this, okay, now, what is that? That's a different type of convergence. So you have convergence in upper lower quadrants, right? So if I'm coming here, it's not that both eyes, and this is what it looks like without convergence, by the way. So here I'm converging. See, I have no convergence. I have to go like this. Usually see the drop of the jaw. 
I have a child with this today where he can't look up, but if I'm looking up at an object, so right now, so say it's my finger, it's central vision and I'm going up and over, but guess what this eye is doing? It's converging. Convergence points here, right? This is why there aren't linear parts in the human body, right? This is what we get into. And you, as you can see, if you watch an astronaut, they have a lot of visual failures of this because their eyes have nothing to counter off. So if I'm doing this and I'm crossing a midline through my right, but if I actually were to take out my right eye, I don't see any of this. Do you see that? There's midline interruptions, not only horizontally and vertically, it goes both ways in both eyes. I have convergence interruption. Please guys, this isn't just convergence. This is convergence, right? If I look over here, this is convergence. My eyes are converging. That means they're coming together. Most people think of the convergence, it's like that air traffic controller. But if I'm throwing a ball, the ball's coming out here, my eyes are converging along, and so I can catch it over with this hand. I still have the convergence. Now me catching a ball with these suckers on, there's gonna be so many gaps, and so it throws off my depth perception. You really have to be a very intelligent being to be able to work around those kind of things. Will you see a difference? Technically, yes. Is it functional, functional vision? There's a lot more things that can be done with and without patching and with your due diligence and stuff that you're learning in the cognitive vision course, you know, using your diamond scale assessments, the sporadic vision, the lack of quality, the lack of focus, the inability to work around it for some, especially when they have vestibular issues going on, unstable pelvis to footing, you're gonna see even more gaps in the vision because again, why? I don't have that pubic bone strike to float those eyes. So now I have to back arch and do all those things to get my eyes where they need to go. They're clever little people. You have to work around it. Every child is different. Something like this I'd probably only use if I was really working on some kind of adult cognitive processing, especially maybe for a high-end ball player, where again, I don't want them to have blind spots to be obvious with the blind spots and work around them and then sharpen the vision that way. You don't take a child that already has, in a sense, blind spots, doesn't have functional vision, especially when they don't have visual arcs and they don't have peripheral vision. That is not a solution for your situation. There's much more effective ways that you can go around it. Thanks.